Hello friends. In the last video we discussed reporting of medicinal adverse effects. In this video we will talk with Amrita about the scope of pharmacovigilance. So Amrita, when does the drug safety monitoring actually start? Drug monitoring is a continuous process and it covers the complete life cycle of a drug starting from the test phase to phase in which the drug is available in the market for use in general public. Okay. I want to make a point here. To my understanding, the safety and efficacy of the drug would have already got tested in the pre-marketing phase. Yes. Right? And only then the drug is made available for public use. Correct. Then why should it be monitored post it is available for use in general public? Your understanding is correct in terms of pre-market stage. Okay. However, pre-market study is done in a controlled environment mm -hmm. where every aspect such as number of patients, duration mm -hmm. of experiment, procedure are predetermined. Okay. And hence the information gathered related to the medicine will be limited to that extent. Okay. Suppose drug X has been studied in 3000 patients before getting approval for marketing. Okay. But what about the rare and serious adverse effects that can be seen only in let's say one out of 6000 patients. You can't study that adverse effect in trial of 3000 patients. Does this make sense? Uh, well, yes, this makes sense as the whole population cannot participate in an experiment. Exactly. But I think this aspect needs a little bit of more explanation. Okay. Let me further simplify this. Every patient using a medicine has a unique environment in which the medicine operates. Okay. Hence a medicine tested in limited conditions, say with just 3000 patients, mm -hmm. can provide the information of medicinal efficacy only in 3000 conditions. Okay. However, when it is made available for the whole population, the scope of studying the effect of medicine increases many folds. Okay. And a lot more information can be gathered, which helps in proper evaluation of effectiveness and safety of the drug in the larger population. Makes sense. And due to the same reason, the health authorities demand from the manufacturers to continue this vigilance even after launching the therapeutic product for general use. Okay. okay. Here you can see in this slide the mm. dots representing the scope of information collection in a controlled environment and in the general public. Okay. Okay. So this uh, it, it appears like uh, this is just a uh, representation. representation. Yes, it's not absolute it's not value. giving the absolute values, right? Exactly. Okay, great. So, uh, Amrita, for our viewers, can you give any example where the post-marketing monitoring has helped in studying the medicinal effect and, um, you know, it has contributed in some way or the other to the public health? Well, there are many such examples. Mm -hmm. I have listed a few in this slide. Let okay. me elaborate the first example for more clarity. Okay. Nemesolide was one of the preferred prescribed painkiller as it was having lesser events of gastritis. But when it was found in post-marketing studies that nemesolide can cause liver damage, it started getting banned in various countries. Mm -hmm. According to US FDA, a drug is taken off from the market when the harm caused by the medicine is greater than benefits provided by that medicine. Right. right. And medicine is normally removed from the market when safety issues cannot be corrected and it is serious threat to the public health. Makes sense. That makes a complete sense. Friends, uh, this brings us uh, to the end of our third video of pharmacovigilance series. Thank you, Amrita. Thank you. In the next video, we shall discuss uh, reporting of adverse effects during the clinical trial. Thanks for watching.